Nashindwa na malisi na we Inge kuwa malaika Nashindwa na malisi na we Inge kuwa malaika Bob Muller I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Tanzania and it was Tang 4. The, uh, again, uh, you, you do come back and you find out, first of all, the first thing you find out is that no one really cared that you went anywhere. That's the first point. They couldn't care less because they can't relate to it. Uh, you end up with, you just spent two years in a strange country and they can relate to the fact they went down to the beach last week. There's no way to understand it. And so you don't even really think about it. Um, the, again, I had sort of an abbreviated re-entry because of the fact I got drafted, but it, it's, 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 it's analogous to kind of the same re-entry crisis that the military guys were going through at that time. Because they come back, because again, their, their culture, they had a very intense experiences, and then they come back. And no one can relate to them, and they can't ever tell anybody because no one ever understands. And so you go through all that, and uh, so it's, as far as the lasting part of it, you know, the lasting is the fact that one thing is, if you ever notice, maybe it's just my generality of it, is that when I go into some strange country, or I hear about very marked uh, elite versus non-elite, I always tend to relate more to the Joe Schmucks of the world. <laughs> I mean, I relate to the guy in the bush. I mean, that, that was the person I lived with, that's the ones I understood, and we would actually ask people, you know, what has independence done for you? What exactly has independence done for you? Because you're out here, Bush. And their comment normally was nothing. Because their day-to-day -day existence was formed by, where do I get food today? Where can I get at work? And what do I have to deal with? I mean, we have it so soft. I mean, I'm thinking like they're, like the infant mortality rate, you know, People died. I mean, people in my crew, uh, nobody died working for us, thank God. But uh, they would have family members die. Uh, they would have children die. And, you know, it's, it's, it was kind of a shock because, you know, most of us, especially when you're in your early 20s, most people you know, people aren't dying very much. Either that or it's their great grandparents. Whereas death was a very real thing, especially with children. And so you, you, you see the uh, depth there that, again, when you come back and you come back to the television watching crew and you're like, this is, this is, <laughs> this is hard to relate to because <laughs> it's so shallow. And so what you end up, if you ever think about it, is you, you don't, I mean, how many times now do you just go sit around, drink coffee, and eat cookies and talk with people? I mean, I used to do that there. In fact, that was, there was this, some of the Peace Corps kids up in Machami, God, we'd sit up there. If we were in town, we'd be up there, and that's exactly what we do, just sit and talk. And that takes an intimacy that you don't have in a lot of these other, uh, when you come back here, you have lots and lots and lots of people that you know, but you don't have that just sit around and drink coffee and eat cookies with types. And so it's, it's, it was, like I say, to me it was a very intense period. Howard Somberg, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Tanzania. I had reverse culture shock when I came home. Uh, I started working and went to went back to graduate school and and I just uh, that was at a time in 67 when when LBJ came out to Century City uh, and there was a big demonstration there and I, I just I don't know I was just buried in in a book uh, for the longest time I just I didn't want to go out um, it was it was a uh, it was quite a shock when I got home. I was so immersed in the culture. I spoke the language well. I was, uh, you know, I, I had a, a good sense of the culture and, and I was very comfortable there. So here I'm coming home to, you know, coming back home, but yet it wasn't coming back home. It, it, was, it was just, uh, I, I, it's hard to describe. Um, but it, it lasted for about, I'd say for about six, eight months. You know, I was just reclusive. I'd go to work or whatever, uh, taking classes, but but I wasn't I wasn't participating in life, so to speak, for for some period of time. 
Uh, I think the benefits for me are immeasurable. I think the, the experience, uh, uh, one can't put a value on that uh, uh, other than, than it was life, you know, life influencing event to spend three years there and knowing that I will have, I walked away with more than probably what I gave, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the, the richness of the experience, the, the language, uh, knowledge, the, the uh, cultural exchange. I always say, people say, well, what'd you do over there? I said, well, I probably came home with more than, than what I left. Ted Weber, or Tex Weber as uh, some called me. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Tanganyika or Tanzania. Well, right away when I, when I came back, uh, I, had, I had a little, uh, what, do you, what do they call that when you came back home? Culture shock. Culture shock, yeah. One was is that the girl that I had been writing to for two years over there, uh, I, was go I, I wanted to be closer to her and to, just to get to know her better. You know, I was, we'd been apart a long time. And so I went to enroll at the University of Texas as a graduate student. And uh, when I got there, it, things were so different. You know, I had changed, you know, and, and, uh, and I tried to get into the studies and then at the same time, we were realizing that, I was realizing that it was gonna take longer to try to develop this relationship and get to, you know, get to move to the point where maybe I thought it was. And so I, I couldn't deal with that. That was part of my culture shock. And I opted and I just dropped out of school and I left that relationship and I went back to my mom and dad's ranch down there. And I spent uh, two weeks just working hard for my dad and kind of walking, you know, spending time out on the farm, quiet time. Finally, my dad said, well, son, uh, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're here and it's okay and I appreciate it. You better look for a job. And so, yeah, I guess I should. I think that that looking back from this this stage in my life, I'm 65 now, I will be this fall anyway, uh, that that was a treasured time. And I don't think we realized how treasured it was until we look back and realize the time that we had on our hands to uh, just to be. We did. Woody Wright, full name is Frederick Woodside Wright. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Tanganyika. I don't know how the Peace Corps fit into that other than I think it helped me. It helped show me you can do pretty much whatever you want to do. And it gave me an adaptability. I don't, I rarely sense that you can't do it. Now you probably can't do it the way you planned on it, but you can get it done. And I think Peace Corps helped with that because there were times when, I mean, we could, you know, there wasn't much to work with, but you can figure out some way how to get it done. Because I remember one of the stories I saw from whoever it was down in Dodoma, and that's typical. I mean, yeah, you figure out how to get it done. Putting that bridge up was, uh, you get that done, yeah. Uh, there's a sense of, and I didn't realize it, there's a uh, sense of camaraderie and uh, closeness that uh, basically has left for 35 or 40 years. It has left. That I didn't realize was that with that group, which I didn't realize until I got this. And I didn't realize it would be quite this emotional. Yeah. And it had a pretty big impact on my life. And I don't know how it's, uh, I assume it's carried over to my family, but I, you'll have to see them about that as to how it works with my kids and my wife. It's an interesting reaction. Yeah, I've looked forward to this. Yeah. 
and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I don't know what else. Uh, contact afterwards is uh, we had. I've made contact and kept contact with Alice in Bob and Ridge, but the others I haven't. And I don't know part of it uh, is going off and doing your life. And, you know, basically we were thrown together. And you go back home and you go finish whatever it was you were going to do and you do it. And then uh, you go on and it's much later you figure out what had happened or you know how it how it affected you so okay Good